Well, hi, and thanks for joining me for this episode of Understanding Business. This is utlradio.com, your business success and legal information station, and I'm your host, Peter Lamont. Today, episode 194, we're going to be speaking with John Kershaw, the creator of the Bristler app. And this thing is amazing. This story is amazing. It's the epitome almost of an overnight success. And we're going to be talking to John about how he managed to go from, you know, punching a time clock, working a job to being a full fledged successful entrepreneur in roughly a year. And for those of you who don't know about the Bristler app, you know, this thing started off as a joke back in 2014. And he has now grown it to a full fledged, full feature rich dating service that's being used in more than 100 cities around the world and has created more than a quarter of a million connections between people with beards and those of you who like to stroke them. John, welcome to the show and thank you so much for being on today. Hi, more than happy to. Lovely to be here. So this thing is amazing. It starts off as a joke in October of 2014 (laughs) and it has become a really popular, successful brand and app. So when you started this off, right, you were working a full-time job. Yeah, so so I was a freelance software developer um, working full-time for a bunch of clients. And one day, what, you're sitting around and you're just thinking, because you have a beard, and you're thinking, hey, wouldn't this be fun? Uh, almost exactly. So <laughs> I was sat there like procrastinating in work. Because as a freelancer, you end up working for people that you you wish you weren't doing the work. So like one afternoon, I'm sat there trudging through, stroking my beard, and I'd just been listening to some business podcast that was talking about this whole new connection economy, in air quotes, uh, that's like springing up where you've got like Airbnb and Uber and these things that connect person with X to person who wants X. And I was sort of sat there wondering to myself, like, if I could come up with one of these ideas, just, like, pull it out of the air, and I ended up just like, ah, beard stroking. It's an <laughs> obvious satirical choice. Uh, so I, I create the, the tagline, connecting those with beards with those who want to stroke them. Um, and I sort of post that to Facebook. Um, and, you know, I'm quite pleased with myself. I think I'm, 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 I think I'm hilarious. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, so, so then on the train home, I'm sort of brainstorming with a bunch of friends for a name, come up with the idea of Bristler, and being the kind of nerdy guy that I am, that night I, I bought some $1 stock photography, made a sign-up page, and Bristler was born. Mm-hmm. So Bristler, the first success Bristler had was when I successfully proved that there was viability there. And that required me to own a domain name, bristler.com, set up a MailChimp mailing list, and put the mailing list on the domain, and then post about it on social media. That didn't require anything. So there was a sign-up page before there was a product, and I think that's where a lot of people fail um, early on in, in building tech businesses, because they're like, okay, I'll build the product, and then people will turn up. And it's like, no, there's no point building the product until people are asking for the product. Mm -hmm. Once you have the app made, now I think this is one of the hardest parts of the business. How do you get people interested in actually downloading this app? So what did you do next? So after two weeks of evenings of building the prototype, that launches, I fix all the bugs. I start to get like a few... Like, I have enough friends that I could get 10 people to sign up. I have this email list of, like, 70 people, and, like, maybe, like, a third of them sign up. I'm on some online communities, so there's, like, Reddit, and I happen to know that Reddit has a subreddit called Beards. And so you just kind of post politely. You're not spamming anyone. You're just like, hey, I made this thing. Is anyone interested? Um, That's how you can get your first, like, 10, 15 people in the door. To go beyond that, and I guess this is the quote-unquote like secret trick that, that Bristler did, even though I, I don't regard it as a trick, I think it's just common sense, is I found trend-setting websites and blogs that are really, really good at gaming 
Facebook for like clicks and, and what have you, um, but sites where they're the authors, the bloggers, are fairly new to the world of blogging. So it could be, the equivalent would be like going on BuzzFeed and finding someone who's written about beards but has only written like four or five articles for BuzzFeed. Right. Um, we then found, well, I then just found a couple of people on Twitter who'd written about beards for um, places like EliteDaily.com, which are like, you know, millennial trendsetter blogs. And I did tweet at them going, hey, you wrote this cool article about beards. Awesome. Have you seen this app? Now, you ended up getting Bristler on some big name media shows, CNBC, and a lot of, of, of really high profile media outlets. Did you target them or was it directly from the buzz generated by the bloggers? That was all uh, buzz. And as soon as you're in one sort of major news outlet, all the others kind of pick up on it. Um, so yeah, that, that was all sort of inbound, organic. Uh, 